Epic. So, I am Evil Mog. Apparently, I know things, and you're all here to see my lovely talk. You're here to see an expert. You're probably sorely mistaken, but that's all right. So, we're here to talk about esoteric hash cat attacks. So, we'll start with some of the. Come on, click. There we go. So, I'm Evil Mog. I'm the Bishop of the Church of Wi Fi version 3 or any greater version. My member of Team Hashcat, I apparently consult for X-Force Red, and hence all the pretty branding. Um, I have a bunch of certifications. Somehow I got my OSCE. I have no idea how. I apparently do pyrotechnics for fun while we're at it. I'm a network monkey, server monkey, pen test monkey, doerish stuff. I'm the chief shenanigan officer for uh, DerbyCon, which is not a real title, so I'm not a real DerbyCon volunteer. Do research, yada yada, all the stupid stuff. This disclaimer, I have to read this one out because IBM Legal will kill me if not. So, I am not a lawyer. Opinions expressed in this talk have not been vetted by IBM or any of its subsidiary companies. Views and opinions expressed are mine and mine alone. I'm not representing the Church of Wi-Fi, nor am I representing Team Hashcat in this talk. No warranties expressed or implied. Consult a professional. I'm not responsible if you set your house on fire, spike your electric bill, or otherwise break stuff. Practice the techniques shown on systems you control and are authorized to penetration test, and don't steal dumps illegally. With that said, why the hell are we here? So some of us have more horsepower than brains. Um, and we work with really fast hashes. So we do stuff like NTLM, MD4, MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, Landman, SCP B code. All the stuff where you get like 320 billion keys per second. And you run out of, you know, when you hit that 90% mark, you need to find new attacks to get beyond 90%. So I like to get creative. This talk is all about the YOLO, so much YOLO. Um, so I'm gonna assume you all know how to use attack mode zero, which is a straight wordless attack, mode one combinators. I know, I assume you know how to use word, uh, mask attacks, hybrid attack mode six, mode seven. This is not a Hashcat 101 talk, and I also assume you're using Linux. I don't discriminate against Windows, but most of us use Linux or Mac when you're cracking hashes. So we're gonna talk about the infinite monkey theory of password cracking. So, infinite monkeys at infinite keyboards will eventually type your password. Unfortunately, we don't have infinite monkeys or infinite keyboards unless you're render man back there. But we do have is GPUs and fast hashes, which is good enough. So, the trick to keeping a large cluster happy is throwing shit against a wall and seeing what sticks. Um, try random things. The nice part is Hashcat is fully pipelineable, so you can do really weird stuff with it. So, Raking. This is a technique that has been around for the last five, six years. It's how generated 2.rule is created, but no one documented how raking works. Um, so we got some example code here. And by the way, all this stuff is on my GitHub, so you can go download all this at the end of it. But we're going to walk through this example. So what raking you do is you say start a sequence of 1 to 100. So you loop over this hashcat attack. And you go and you set up, say, workload profile three, so you're going to run re really fast. Don't run this on your home theater PC. We're going to use attack mode NTLM, or and we do it on the straight word list attack. Tell it where your hash list is, and loop over all of your dictionaries, and I mean all of them. So grab your know, 30, 40 dictionaries, throw it in a rule or throw it in a directory, generate 100,000 rules, and then we're going to turn on debug mode. What debug mode does is it will capture the original rule. It will capture the rule that it will capture the original word, the rule you um, cracked on, and then the resulting output. And we're going to collect all of these. You know, loop it over a hundred times. We're then going to run cut. We're going to create a debug.rule file, a debug.dict file, and then re-execute that attack. This is exactly how generated two dot rule was created because we sat there looping over all of our hash lists for six months. This is back in 2012. So this is basic raking. It's, it hasn't shown up in anyone's hash techniques list. It's talked about on IRC once in a while. It's a really effective technique, and it should be done by more folks. I'm hoping someone creates a better generated 2 rule file because mine kind of sucked and was created six years ago. So next technique we're going to talk about, if we get really bored, is cut B. So this is a, someone dropped a blog, Rants by Chort, back in 2012. Um, we've simplified his technique a little bit because his original script didn't really work 100%, so you need some tweaking to it. So what we're doing is we set a couple of paths. We then loop over a sequence. So what, could, what password splicing is, is say you have the password of 123 password. We will take number one, 
We'll take one, two, we'll take one, two, three, one, two, three, PA, loop all the way through. That's a traditional cut B attack. So what this does is you can say you've got a giant hashcat pot file, but you know, two, three megs. And you were trying to go set up an expander attack. When you're using a cut B style attack, you can do some interesting brute force by taking existing patterns on things like say you've 2018 in a password, it'll get auto appended for you. Now this technique works fairly well, not many people do it, and you can process all your word lists. But we're going to show an advanced technique I created later on that's an enhancement to cut B that will uh, decimate your password hashes. So that's cut B. Who here knows what expander is by a show of hands throughout the room? Probably everybody, right? How many people here modify expander? Because expander by default only gives you a four character output when you run your passwords through. So say you take your um, dump, you're going to get maximum eight characters on an A1 attack. Every time you download Hashcat Utilities, go open up the expander.c file, change length max from four to eight, then recompile the code. You will get far better results, but we leave this as a default because Adam one day decided it was more efficient to go with four, not eight, but it gets terrible coverage. Little known trick, something that should be you know, done by almost everybody, you know, add this to your tickle trunk. Now, this is the evil mog secret sauce that tends to get me passwords cracked left, right, and center. I call this my blender. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your Hashcat pot file. We are going to cut using the colon for a delimiter. And now a secret we've got on this is a lot of people will stop your cut at the first colon. The problem is if someone has a colon in their password, you're not gonna get the rest of the passwords so your cracks are gonna be incomplete. So you go dash F2 dash, take the pot file, put it into a can.list. list. We run a standard cut B on it, forward and back. And then if you wanna go really fancy, we run expander through it. So we take the output of your cut B, re-expand it and attach. You know, you'll get a lot of crap and it, you know, it takes your word list from, well, let's call it four megs and it increases it to about 200 megs. But when you've got eight GTX 1080s, it still only takes nine minutes. And you crack another you know, 10, 20% on your password dump. Works fairly well. We're gonna actually make this even better on the next couple of slides. But you know, stuff like this, this is also in the GitHub, so it works fairly well. So our next technique, purple rain. Somebody modified raking to make my life really easy. So basically what raking is, you take a word list and you shuffle it. And the reason why you shuffle it is Adam wrote a tool called the Prince Processor. And it's basically a candidate password generator. The thing with prints is if you give it the same output in the same order, you'll get the same results out of it. But if you shuffle the word list, it generates completely different candidates. So you shuffle, say, rocku.txt, you pipe it into Prince Processor, you pipe it into Hashcat, generate 100,000 rules and turn on debug mode, and you'll sit there and you look, or let it literally sit there for three days or so, and you'll crack a ridiculous amount of hashes. Just burn the horsepower. It's stuff you try when you have nothing else to do. And if you want to go collect the hashes afterwards, we call it Purple Rain Barrel. And this was revolutionary, because if you do this on an NTLM version 2 hash, you'll probably crack it in the user world. Now, the other thing is, like he was talking about how Hashcat is pipelineable. So, and all the Hashcat utilities are fully pipelineable. So we can do things like take permute, pipe it into prepare, pipe it into Prince Processor. So Jeremy got liquored one day for his class and figured, why don't we pipe the output of Prince Processor into Prince Processor, then pipe it into Hashcat and call it Prinception. And oddly enough, this actually works. So this example we have on here is we're going to shuffle rocku.txt, we're going to pipe it into Prince Processor, pipe it into Prince Processor, pipe it into Hashcat, generate 100,000 rules, and just let it sit there. Check on it in about a week. If you take this on your average corporate active directory dump, you'll go from, let's call it 40% hash crack to about 80 overnight. This also works well on NTLM version 2. I don't recommend doing this on a slow hash. Try this on bcrypt, you'll be very, very, very sorry. Do this on NTLM, SHA-1, MD5, MD4, anything reasonably fast, even NTLM version one or version two, it should be okay. Just don't try anything like that's salted and slow because yeah, you'll probably spike your electric bill. So that's Prinception. 
So let's kick this up yet another notch. How about we take cut B output, feed it into Prince Processor with 100,000 rules. See what happens. Because why not? So I, we don't need this bash script because it really doesn't do anything, but I just get lazy on my pipelines and don't feel like shuffling you know, members of my shuffle command. So all we're doing is we're basically taking shuffling our can.cut B file we created earlier, pipe it to Prince Processor, pipe it into Hashcat, generate rules, give it a pot file path, give it your usernames if you've got your things formatted the, the incorrect way, and away you go. So this one gets even more creative. Now, mask generation. Who here creates masks in all their candidate files? Probably not many of you. Um, so tool came out aeons ago called PAC. Um, the newest version on GitHub works fairly well. What we effectively do is you feed a bunch of word lists or your candidate files in and you create masks based on them. So this is a basic mask generation, but you know, the problem is you need to figure out how many packets per second you're running, have things finish in a reasonable period of time. So my methodology, I set, say, 160 billion keys per second with a 360 second runtime for my maximum mask time. And I run this over, not just my candidate.list, I run it through my expanded versions and my cut B versions. So if you run it just off the passage you cracked, you're not going to get much. But if you run it through expander, all of a sudden you're expanding your key space without resorting to straight out brute force. So run it over your expanded files, your cut B files. So that, you know, it works not bad, but what about hybrid mode? Who here still uses mode six and mode seven? If you don't, you probably should. So what do you do to figure out what people are appending their passwords with? Well, let's set the minimum length of three, maximum length of eight, and redo that same style of an attack. Then use those in mode A6, A7. Don't just run it on your passwords, run it on your expanded, and it gets you some really interesting patterns. These will take you a week or two to run, but hey, you guys run your corporate active directory audits once every quarter or so. You can let it sit there for a couple of months for grins. God knows the attackers are. I mean, I collect my active directory hashes for years, and we go crack them later whenever I think of random stuff to try at three in the morning because I got no life. <laughs> So, you know, here's a typical A6 attack. You know, we run Hashcat in mode 1000, so NTLM. Run it through your combine.ntlm file, which is our hash file in this case. Workload profile 3, mode A6. On the left side is my candidate.cutb file that I created earlier. Right side is my hybrid sorted mask I just created from that script. Turn on optimized mode and put on a box. The nice part is if you have, you know, 50, 60 uh, nodes with multiple GPUs on them each, Take a spare node, take it off in the corner, let it crack something, forget about it. It's like a good fine wine. Check on it in a couple of months, see what comes out. And here's some of the passwords we're getting out of this thing. It's actually rather creative. You got things like unicorn 2016, you know, MAAB 2018, Luke 2239. Um, you got some weird stuff on here. And this is from an actual thing we extracted from hashes.org or some other legal p repository of hashes. And this is all using these techniques in this uh, slide. So I invented a new cut B technique and I'm rather proud of this because I was trying to fill content for this talk. Um, ran out of time or ran out of content and I'm like, hey, everyone who does cut B doesn't handle things in a very particular way. So We'll go back to the example of one, two, three password. If you're running a password splice on this, you'll start off with one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, PA, et cetera. Um, when I'm done this, what we do is we stop at that, we increment the sequence, and then we go with two, two, three, two, three, PA, and it expand your pattern components. Um, I figured out this only expands our hashcat files for cut B by you know, 30, 40% but it was cracking that many more passwords and only taking still nine minutes on a rig. So this is actually incredibly effective. And as far as I can tell from all my Googling, no one knows or no one's documented how this actually works. <coughs> Sorry about that. So the starting of the script, it's you know, relatively easy. We do a cut file. We do cut dash D, um, which sets, you know, here's our um, sequence number, our delimiter of a colon. We rip apart the cache cat file. You know, pipe it up through candidate.list. We start off a quick little loop through one through eight. You can modify this if you want to go with one through nine, one through ten for your sequencing. Then a little bit of bash magic basically allows us to do negatives or um, increment this in a loop. So what this does is 
it restarts the sequence. Um, so it goes one through eight, then it starts, you know, two through eight, et cetera, all the way through. So it'll loop through and expand your candidate pieces. I haven't figured out how to make the negative side work yet, so I'm working on that piece. Um, that update should hit hash or hashcat when I get liquored at the bar here at DerbyCon, probably in a couple hours. So watch out for my GitHub. Um, we then cat all the files together, run them through Expander, and create your files. So this one's relatively effective. Um, and then if you really want to go hardcore, run Expander after it all and re-expand all your outputs just because why not? And if you really want to get bored, take Expander and pipe the output of Expander into Expander. You know, just try stuff like that. I mean, I get up one day and I'm like, hey, I want to go pipe Expander in through permute, in through prepare, in through sort unique, then back into Prince Processor and into Hashcat after piping it through Shuffle a couple of times. Just try random things. Um, the weird part is we don't want to resort to brute force, but sometimes you just get a, um, you'll get a writer's block almost when you're trying to crack a hash and you're trying to figure out what's, you know, cracking this and entropy is your friend. Um, get out of that mold, try something random. I mean, I've done some weird stuff like piping, you know, music lyrics in through expander, in through cut B, in through rule files, and then re-cutting them up with cut B and expander again, then piping to Prince processor. Just go do random stuff. That's the point. You know, these techniques are going to change all day long, but users, even though they are reasonably predictable, they do some random things like looking around. So if you can kind of predict how users are creating their passwords, you'll get far more effective. So that's what this whole you know, kind of talk came down to. And here's a comparison of the file sizes, right? Like our standard um, candidate file started off at 2.6 megs. The expanded version are 189 megs. And 189 megs on a hash on an NTLM A1 attack, and that still takes, like I said, nine minutes on eight GPUs. If you're running this at home, less than an hour. And you get far more results. So try some of these techniques uh, in the future for your next one. And now the best part is while I'm at it, all this stuff is on GitHub. So feel free to rip apart the shell scripts, send me pull requests, play with stuff. My code of conduct is simple. If your code's good, it's good. <laughs> Don't be a jerk on the mailing list if there is one, because there isn't. <laughs> and hit me up on Twitter, and uh, feel free to join the Church of Wi-Fi and watch our shenanigans at Hacker Jeopardy later on tonight. <laughs> Questions now that I'm done. Thank you, by the way. Thank you all for showing up and listening to my rant. So, questions? No? Perfect. You guys all rock. <laughs>